Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and today I have for you the Riot Bashudo. Uh, this, I, this wasn't something that I knew, but evidently this is a small run knife. They, they only did, I think, like 34 of each or something like that. One of my followers told me, I had no idea. I just like the Quaken shape. And it fell in my sweet spot for the size. So I decided to pick it up. And this variant is $242. Uh, at the time I'm recording this video, there was still uh, one of the variants um, available at Blade HQ. So I can't promise it'll still be there by the time I upload this, but definitely go check it out if you're interested. Uh, they had this variant, which is the uh, hand rub satin, beautiful, with uh, carbon fiber. You can also get it with a carbon fiber and a black blade and carbon fiber with a stonewash blade. And I think the stonewash blade is a little bit cheaper. I don't recall exact price, but it was cheaper. Um, they also had the same variations in the the with the blade with uh, burlap micarta scales and they look like from what I saw on other people's videos it was like a polished uh, burlap micarta brown polished burlap micarta and that's what I would have picked up but I waited too long and they were all gone by time I picked this one up so I'm happy with what I have so let's get or oh, before I get started I don't know, this is, I hadn't bought a Riot in a little while, and I don't know if this is something new or something they've been doing or not, but I've never got one like this, and it's a new uh, padded case. It, it came with their uh, Velcro, I mean, there's patch on the Velcro, and the Riot embossed, and it's like, it's a taco style, and it's velcroed and then you have a sleeping bag on this side where it's velcroed you can put a knife in there and then uh, you have this see-through mesh window and uh, the knife was in there and the knife came sealed in a ziploc bag so I'm guessing they're trying to make sure it doesn't corrode on the shelves or anything I don't know also in there came this um, this Riot knives, little baggie to put your knife if you wanted to, and it also came with a Riot embossed uh, cleaning cloth, like a microfiber cloth, and something that I love seeing from companies is they added some spare screws, awesome, and I'm pretty sure those are titanium screws, I don't have my magnet handy, oh yeah I do, here's a magnet right here, well it's got that steel Stainless steel race washer in there. Surprised they didn't give bearings, but uh, let's see. Yep. Yep. Those are titanium screws. So very, very cool to see. I love the added goodies. But let's take a look at the, the Bushido up close. Like I said, this one has that hand rub satin. Absolutely beautiful. Not, not something I usually go for, but I just think this knife looks so elegant that the hand rub satin looked very, very nice. I don't know how the stone wash would have went. And I th thought about getting the PVD coated, but uh, I just think this one looks way better. Um, you have that, that nice upswept trailing point blade shape. You have a nice top swedge that goes the entire length of the blade. On this side, you have the Riot logo there. And on this side, you have the blade steel designation, which is Bowler M390. And from my testing on a few of Riot's knives, they do a pretty good job on their heat treat. Um, at least uh, the 204P that I tested, it did phenomenal. So... I'm hoping that this one will hold up just as well. Close it up. This is a front flipper. 
And those of you who've been on my channel long enough know that I'm not really a front flipper fan. But this one was done exceptionally well. I love how they had this like curved right here. It's very low profile. It's not sticking straight up. And what that allows you to do is, is just kind of like put your finger on it, roll it. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but just whoop, it's so easy. It's thoughtless. You can put your finger around like that. You can do the reach around. I mean, the possibilities are, are, are endless. So it's definitely got that fidget factor, no doubt about it. You know, that's something I, I enjoy when I'm sitting watching a movie with my wife. She says, stop the clicking. <laughs> so excellent job on the, uh, on the front flipper. You do have some jimping up here. It's, I'd say, medium jimping. It's not aggressive. It's not going to tear up your thumb. Uh, they do have a sharpening notch cut in there, perfectly executed. And you might have a little smile. Just a hair. <clears throat> uh, the jimping on the flipper tab is kind of wide. It catches the thumb just right. It's not overly aggressive to where if you do this for a while, you're going to feel it. It's just right. Uh, it bites down in there, especially you grab the back of that. I mean, it just rockets out. It's riding on ceramic cage ball bearings with a ceramic detent ball. Close it up. You just have your standard hardware T8 on uh, all your hardware and nicely done at that. As you can see, it's nice and crisp. That carbon fiber is free of voids. At least I haven't found any voids. Y'all let me know. Sometimes you can see it better in the camera, but I don't see any. Nicely done. And it's also contoured. It's a, a top scale over a ti titanium liner lock. And the, scale, the carbon fiber scales have been shadow boxed to where you can see the titanium liners on the outside. I don't mind that at all, especially whenever I'm gripping the knife. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't feel, I don't feel those liners. Uh, your access to that lock bar is excellent. They have this little cutout on the show side scale. And you have a little chamfered uh, edge right there so it's not sharp. Easily get my thumb into there and easily disengage that lock. The lock is sitting at around 30 to 40%. And I like it a little bit later than that, but, you know, I, I, I'm good with it. Absolutely no up and down. Absolutely no side to side. Bank fault lock up and see, that is definitely a fingerprint magnet. Uh, on this side, you have a mill titanium pocket clip with a lot of retention. Let's see what it looks like in the pocket. I've been carrying it in my lightweight shards. It goes in there just fine. Let's see how it works in jeans. It has a perfect amount of lip on the clip. Lip on the clip. And there you go. It's not deep carry, but um, at least it's carbon fiber showing. So I think it looks nice. And you got something to grab onto to pull the knife out of the pocket. The screws are completely flush in there. They got those nice panhead screws there with the Torx T8. Let me make sure those are T8 as well because this is a T6. Yep, T8 on the pocket clip. Nicely done. Riot. They have a lanyard hole for all you lanyard people. Oh, it is tip up right hand carry only. Sorry about that lefties. I didn't make the knife. <laughs> uh, your centering is dead on. Wouldn't expect less from Riot. You have a titanium geared backspacer. And it, it sticks out a little bit. As you can see. And they have a nice deep bevel on both sides 
to make it kind of like in a diamond shape doesn't hurt and that that does give a little bit of grip texture I mean let's check the inside yeah I don't I didn't think so there is no internal milling but weight I don't find to be an issue let's see what it weighs Whoop. okay let's try this again my scale didn't want to work 2.63 ounces I think that's more than fair real quick let's see so there's 2.63 ounces let's see how big this blade is it's right at three inches a little little shy of three inches so it's gonna be legal in a lot of areas that have three inch and under blade laws and you can also have a locking knife total length on this bad boy is about six and three quarters inches long your grip area is about I'd say three and five eighths inches long and let's see get your thickness in the pocket I want to turn this bad boy on 0.53 so not bad at all and very very slender in the pocket in this dimension 0.87 and let's get see what this blade stock is 0.12 pretty chunky uh, that's one thing I would have loved to see I would have loved to see them use like uh, eighth inch stock or not or like like the same stock as a bug out but you know you can look back here by the jimping you can see it's pretty stout uh, stock but for a smaller knife, I don't, I don't know, I don't really ever see the need. But let's see if they, let's see if they thinned it out a good bit. This is a high flat grind on here. Let's see what what the measurement is. It's very hard to do this behind the camera. So it's right around, right around twenty thousandths there. And let's see if I can get this. Right around twenty thousands there, so around twenty thousands. That's the same as a uh, Spider Co military, so not bad, not bad at all. Would I've liked to see it thinner to about twelve thousands, ten thousands? Yeah, that would have been awesome. But this is what I get, so I'm okay with it. Uh, let's get some size comparisons out of the way. Let's see. First up, you have. A Hinder XM18 3 inch. The 3 inch XM18 is just a little bit longer, not much. And your Chris Reed Sabenza 31. And I'm going to have to hold it because this thing doesn't like to sit by itself. Very, very similar in size. Uh, you got about the same grip area as uh, Sabenza. So that's a good comparison there. Let's see what else. Two more. Got the Spyderco Paramilitary 3. Or PM, no, Paramilitary 3, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's a little bit smaller than the PM3. And, of course, the Param PM2 is going to uh, dwarf it. So, like I said, it's not a big knife by any means. It's perfect in that size that I, I, I love so much. So if you're not really into smaller knives, this one might not be for you. Um, so overall, I, I think it's a really cool knife. Uh, if you like that quaking blade shape, um, if you like front flippers, if you want like a nice elegant looking uh, profile, nice, uh, nice and slender in the pocket, lightweight, uh, quality blade steel, and there you go solid lock up the only things that i would have liked to see different like i said i would have loved to see a little bit thinner blade stock i know if they would have had thinner blade stock though when they would add this swedge it would have made it really thin up top 
because I've only been able to cut a few things with it so far. Just a little bit of cardboard. And what I noticed when I wasn't using the hammer grip, when I used the saber grip right here pushing down, it didn't hurt, but it's a little uncomfortable just because that swedge thins this out a little bit. So you're kind of pushing down onto that. Um, like I said, it looks like you have a little smile toward the back. That's something I wish they could have brought that out just a little bit more. And uh, that's about it. Overall, I think it's an awesome knife. You got great blade to handle ratio, excellent action. Um, and from what I'm told, this is somewhat of like an exclusive run of knives. Hopefully that's not the case. And if you wanted, you can pick one up. I'll try to leave a link down below to the one that was left at Blade HQ whenever I, I did this video. Hopefully it's still there for anybody who wants it. All right, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Uh, I'm using a new mic in my shop. I, I turned the AC off uh, to do this video just to try to see how nice the quality sounded without it. But uh, the next one, I'm probably going to have to put that AC back on because I'm sweating buckshot right now. <laughs> All right, guys and girls, I hope everybody's having an absolutely wonderful day, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.